Hello everybody, welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Josh. Hello, Scott. Josh, my friend, the Borderlands movie continues to not make any goddamn sense, but there's quite <laughs> a lot of stuff to get through. Now, we have an additional casting came last night that Mr. Jack Black is going to be Claptrap, which I love. I immediately tweeted thinking that that's God tier, mainly because I love the Kung Fu Panda movies. Um, and dude, <laughs> dude, dude being Claptrap, I'm just saying the Kung Fu Panda trilogy is one of the best trilogies of all time. Just going sure. to put, put it out there. Yeah. Um, but also... And um, we just thought we'd break a lot of this stuff down with this movie because uh, if you go through the casting so far, you've got Jack Black as Claptrap, Kate Blanchett is going to be Lilith, um, which I guess I can kind of see in terms of just sort of being this like magic channeling. If they go down the Firehawk route, she can get her wings out. She can be this sort of badass on screen thing. Yeah. Um, Kevin Hart's going to be Roland. So I guess there's like an energetic sort of presence coming from Kevin Hart to be that character. Maybe inject a bit more comedy to him, I guess. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis is Pandoran archaeologist Patricia uh, Tannis, who yeah. I forgot who that was. I'm not a massive Borderlands fan anyway, but I had a bit of a Google. And Patricia Tannis is the person that is sort of slightly goes mad or has gone fully mad and leaves you a bunch of audio logs that you can read about. She's investigating these uh, this ancient alien race, the Iridians, I think they're called. Um, and it seems like that might be what they're going for because, uh, according to a writer from Forbes from last year, um, the movie is going to be, you know, it's set in the distant future. You've got these Vault Hunters going after a vault on Pandora. And the thing that's inside there is ancient alien technology. So they might be doing the whole Iridian thing. Um, and then, yeah, it's just as a, as a culmination of the cast and the fact that it's directed by Eli Roth and it's written by Craig Mazin, Mr. Chernobyl, Chernobyl's own Craig Mazin. I still don't believe this is true, right? Because you told me this, Scott, just before we started filming. This was a this was a part of the uh, process that I just hadn't heard of. I didn't realize he was on script writing duties. And I'm just, I just... I just can't believe that's not a bit. I can't believe that's not you <laughs> pulling my leg and having me yeah. on because how is the Chernobyl man making the Borderlands movie? Like, he's already making uh, The Last of Us HBO TV show, mm -hmm. um, of course, but like, is he now just the. Has he, has he. Did he make Chernobyl so that he could <laughs> live out his dream of adapting his favorite video game properties? I don't know, but that's the only Maybe. explanation I have for this. Yeah, it's, it's a weird thing. I mean, yeah, like he just sort of, I mean, the, the, the write-up that I read, I think it was on Eurogamer said that he's he's doing the movie based off, like Eli Roth is directing the movie based off a script by Craig Mazin. Um, so whether he's actively involved going forward, whether there's, you know, maybe the script is going to be changed going forward, but the, the guts of it apparently are whatever Craig Mazin initially laid down um, and they had their first draft completed in 2020. Um, so I guess like, I don't know, how do you see this coming together? Because for me, Borderlands isn't something that is story heavy. There's obviously lore there, there's terminology there, there's the Atlas Corporation fighting the Vault hunters and they're going after all the loot and whatever but like that I, in a way you know that could be like a sort of super fun national treasure jumanji energy style movie where it's yeah. just an excuse to have fun with some cool actors and everything and i thought the jumanji movies were like surprisingly solid like for as much as they shouldn't have worked like they're totally fine at least i've only seen the first one but they reviewed well enough um do you think that's the kind of tone that they're going for or are they getting these actors and mr Mason to try and do something else with the characters well i would have said that's the tone they're going for just based on the fact that you know obviously jack black's in there he was in uh you know jumanji and stuff and i think jumanji is a good touchstone because that took like a broad video game plot of get the mcguffin or whatever you know yeah had even even had lives in that movie you know it was very <laughs> yeah. video gamified and I think like the plot of Borderlands 1 in particular, like I've played that game so many times. And mm. I, even even before doing this news, I had to do a quick quick um, catch up on all of the big plot points because it's just something that kind of washed over me. But the basic premise of like these four vault hunters, you know, searching for the vault, this, this mm. thing that only happens once every 200 years, like that's a pretty solid basis for a movie, especially when you get all of mm. these couches together, all of these cool actors and allow them to bounce off each other. But it's the inclusion of Eli Roth and Craig Mazin at this point that makes me wonder what tone they're going for. Obviously, <laughs> Eli Roth has made uh, like one or two family-friendly movies in the past. He just recently did the, I think it's the house with the clock in its walls, clock with its which walls? Yeah. also starred Jack Black. Like that skewed um, younger, but before then he's known primarily for things like Hostel and yeah. Cabin Fever and horror movies like that. So maybe he's kind of trying to bring that kind of edge to it. Like it's just a mad project. Every single time I hear <laughs> about a new casting choice, I just, I wonder how they ended up with that person or how that person was convinced to sign on because like these are big name stars, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. they're playing like these characters in a video game adaptation that even though Borderlands is big, I don't think it's on the same level of like a Last of Us or an Uncharted in terms of the popular consciousness. Not saying it's a it's it's worse than those games or saying it's no, but... like like I'm trying to put it down or anything, but it's you know, it's not in households the same way. Like I, I, I know what you say. mean. 
Yeah. Oh, see, I don't know. Like for me, like I would say, like the Borderlands IP is is like a known thing. Like the the hyper on Borderlands Three beforehand. Like we were talking about that for years. Like when the hell is Borderlands Three gonna come out? And they were doing all the pre sequel stuff. And I feel for me, I do feel like the Borderlands IP is like just as known as Last of Us. I would say in terms really? of just like, have okay. you heard of this kind of thing? So I, I think if I did the mum test and just sort of rang my mum and said, do you know, have you heard of have you heard of the Last of Us? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, have you heard of Borderlands? Yeah, maybe. Like I just, I don't know. I think if I did the mum test, they might both be up there. Um, but I'm gonna throw a potential curveball here because. Come on. Um, when I think of The Last of Us HBO TV series, and me and you and Ben Roy, I think, did a whole podcast on this, um, I don't need that because, for me, the, the, the video game is, like, perfect. You've got brilliant casting, cinematography, pacing, narrative punch, everything. What can a, a TV series bring to the table that the game hasn't already nailed? In Borderlands' case, a lot of people love Tales from the Borderlands because it fleshed out the narrative side of it and the lore side of it. And I guess that could be something that maybe carries across into the movie. Mm -hmm. um, and so in a way, I'm a bit, I'm more up for a Borderlands movie out of sheer curiosity because how do you take a franchise that is so gameplay focused and then yeah. flesh it out into an hour and a half, two hour movie? So for me, in a really stupid way, there's more, I'm more interested in a Borderlands movie, even though I care less about the Borderlands games and I love The Last of Us. <laughs> I'm just living, I'm just a walking contradiction, mate. No, I know what you mean, because I mean, when we were talking about The Last of Us HBO show yesterday and the news we did, you know, we were talking about how, you know, it's going to have to, it's going to try to thread a particularly difficult needle because you can't get too close to the source material because it's so cinematic to begin with and those performances mm -hmm. are so iconic and the camera work, the script, the editing, everything is so filmic in general that, you know, it's going to be hard to create a, an adaptation that kind of justifies its own existence and a jump to mm -hmm. a different medium. But like you say, Borderlands is so gameplay driven. You get a lot of the story just by characters calling you. You know, like in the second game, Handsome Jack shows up a lot, but mm -hmm. so much of his character is fleshed out by him just, you know, ringing you up and giving you grief, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's like going to be interesting to see. Thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see how they adapt that kind of very specifically gaming style of storytelling into a you know a feature length movie, presumably mm -hmm. an entire franchise. I imagine that's what they're eyeing up going forward. We should we should touch on that because yeah we've got you know great casting so far. I think it's worth because we were going to maybe go down like certain casting choices. I think reading what I've because I don't remember Patricia Tannis at all. I had to run that by Jules and be like who the hell is this person? And then reading up that oh yeah she's the person who was like searching for loot for so long she went slightly insane or like full on insane over time. Um you know in the whole time with the aliens and everything. Um but speaking of Handsome Jack and you can touch on any other casting if you want. But like the Handsome Jack stuff, do you think that they will bring him in? He'll be the main antagonist or is he something that you tease towards the end and that's how you get your sequel well because i'm incredibly selfish and i'm not entirely sure this will get a sequel i want right. him to bring him in earlier because he's such mm -hmm. a great character and i want to know about what everyone thinks oh, i want to know down in the comments what everyone thinks about like who should play him and stuff because i feel yeah. like there's so much potential for him to become like this great um character played by like a great actor or whatever mm -hmm. but i mean it makes sense for, for them to maybe make this first movie a little bit self-contained you know just introduce the vault hunters introduce the idea of vaults the world because i mean there's a lot of world building to be done like it's it's a hard mm. sell to just be like we're on this planet pandora there's these things called vaults there's an ancient <laughs> alien race we set them all up we're mm -hmm. we're in this kind of weird mad max style thing and then maybe end on a tease of handsome jack into a you know a a different sequel yeah well that's the thing he like obviously i'm not gonna is it, it, it kind of is spoilers because it's like well this could happen in the movie but handsome yeah. jack kills main characters or at least characters who are now main characters in the potential movie um, that's a potential thing. And for me, I was like, well, that could be a great way to introduce that character. You have someone at the very end, maybe even post credits or whatever, come in, kill whatever main character, and then you reveal whoever you've cast as Handsome Jack there in the movie, like Matt yeah. Damon in Interstellar style. Um, <laughs> so I guess um, to that end, like who would you cast as Handsome Jack? Did you have someone nailed down? Because I've got, I've got a hell of a pick, mate. See, you do that. Uh, I don't even want to like you know hypothesize or you know pontificate <laughs> on who could play him because I feel like you've got a pretty spot on shout and it's not the shout that I expected but when you sent me this I thought you know what I can I can see that I can see I'm really just throwing it out there that I think James Vanderbeek should be the <laughs> <laughs> and I you, the only reason is because I watched him do a rap battle with Randall Park the other day, Gosh, and, um, and he was just great. And he sort of just he was. I mean, obviously Randall Park flattened him, but like he was there. And uh, and I just think he's got great presence. I like the idea of this like sort of formally like kind of half comedy, half drama guy coming back, embodying the handsome Jack energy, kind of being. He can completely be this sort of snarling kind of villain who's a bit suave, a bit stylish. Um, I did see though because I tweeted that out. Someone uh, replied saying that it should be Anthony Starr, which um, is the dude that plays Homelander in the Boys. 
Um, mm. And that is a hell That's of a pretty casting. Good. Like yeah. that would make it so much darker. Um, but at the same time, you know, he could, if you, again, I just, I keep leaning on the Craig Mason side of it and being like, oh, is there going to be more dramatic heft to this than what we think? But that's only because he's, I only know him from Chernobyl. Um, But obviously he's about to go into The Last of Us, which felt like more of a direct thematic continuation or whatever of what, like the the dourness of Chernobyl carries into Last of Us. But like Borderlands would have to be something completely different. Well, I mean, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like Borderlands 2 especially, whilst it felt a lot more character-driven, it also did have those big emotional moments. Again, not Mm. to spoil anything from the games, because it might then (laughs) spoil something from the movies, but like you said, Mm -hmm. you know, there are deaths, there are big confrontations between, you know, the likes of Lilith and Handsome Jack and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. There is emotional um, storytelling to mind there, which is kind of why my mind immediately goes to that second movie, because uh, that second game, because I just associate that game with me being a bit more um, complicated and having a bit more depth in terms of its Mm -hmm. storytelling. But then the first game is kind of a bit more, it cut and dry and easier to set up, I think, for a first entry in a franchise. Mm. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like they could play it super simple. It's just, it's such a, that's why it's so weird to talk about because it's like Borderlands, like it, it, if you're going to do a really basic version of that movie, then it's a, a quite a light and fluffy action adventure style movie with a really simple plot, Jumanji style, and you just kind of have fun with those actors. But why cast this caliber of actor? Not that they're all like top tier, oh my God, Oscar winners, but they're still, yeah. they've got great range. And um, personally, uh, out of all of them, my favorite is obviously Jack Black. Uh, as Claptrap, and I think like he's the nearest analog to what his character is in my head, um, yeah. where I'm just like, I can totally just see that voice coming out of Claptrap and it just totally works. Um, <sighs> I don't know if you have any like favorites or anything. Well, it, it's funny because like, I, I, I love Jack Black. Like I'm a big Jack Black fan. I'll watch him <laughs> in anything. I even saw him in, you know, Jumanji, which I wouldn't have yeah. cared about, you know, him and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Um, but when it comes to like Clap, Claptrap especially, mm. like I, I kind of wonder why they didn't just get, you know, I don't, I don't know, maybe like well, the, the dude original voice. Yeah. yeah, the dude from the game games like i mean it's going to be a cg character presumably it's a voice acting role and mm. you know what better way to kind of you know give one to the fans than maybe bring that actor True. back i don't know yeah well they, that would have been such that would have been a hell of a thing because they recast him in borderlands 3 there was that yeah. whole horrible thing with randy mm-hmm. pitchford and the original dude left but uh, gearbox and so like yeah but i mean it is it is a voice acting only role that was always the thing with why did they get vin diesel to be groot when he's literally just saying i am groot you could have given yeah. it to literally anybody um, just some engineer down there in the corner or something. But um, yeah, I don't know. I guess like with, with that, they'd want every part of the, the cast to be this like big bombastic thing. And it got me in. I mean, I'm curious what a, a Jack Black, a computerized Jack Black voice sounds like coming out of Claptrap. Um, and I guess I would hope that they'd do like a practical effect, like BB-8 style, have him like ro- roaming cool. around the set. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, let us know what you think down the comments below of the Borderlands movie so far. We can barely find the words for it, but hopefully going <laughs> forward, we'll, uh, we'll continue to cover it as more things come out. Um, for now, though, I've been Scott from MoreCulture.com. I've been Josh from MoreCulture.com. And we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.